course. But look, um, obviously, as I said, a lot of you messaged me after I paid up um, the guest for this week. And obviously, a lot of the questions were what are the roads. So we might as well just crack that egg while we're here and just get into it. <laughs> uh, so firstly, just what was that like for you? Um, obviously, there's been a few like behind the scenes and there was a couple of things that got they put out at the time. But what was that like for you really just working on that set, especially such a big set with so many people involved? Yeah, 100%. It was crazy. I mean, I don't know if, if, if anyone knows this story. People who obviously are close to me know the story. But um, obviously, I mentioned I was in Waterloo Road when I was like 13. Um, and that was filmed in Manchester, in Rochdale, um, literally not too far away from me. Um and um, you know, uh, with David Johnson, I had um, a fantastic casting director um, called Michelle Smith. Um, you know, she contacted me while when I was like, you know, seventeen, um, and you know, I got the audition for Waterloo Road, and it was literally out of six hundred and fifty people. So there was auditions in Glasgow, there was auditions in Manchester, and there were auditions in London. So it was so open, you could have people that were Scottish, you could have people that was blah, blah, blah. But I actually didn't know it was filmed in Scotland at the time. So I went through the whole period of going through like four or five auditions and eventually my agent said to me, you know, you've got the part, you know, we'll sort your accommodation out, we'll sort, we'll sort your travel out. So I'm like, huh? What do you mean? What do you mean travel? And she, oh, sorry, Mark, it's, it's filmed in Scotland now. You'll be, you're going to be moving. You're going to be moving to Scotland for about two years. So I was like, "What?" And that was on my 18th birthday. I li- literally moved out on my 18th birthday, and I spent my 18th birthday in a pub in Scotland on my own, drinking a Blue Wicked. Um, and it was honestly so scary. It was. I was. I was. Actually, I, I'm not a nervous guy. I never get nervous, but I was. I was a little bit anxious. A little bit nervous. Um, but when you get into it and you meet the cast and you meet, you know, the producers, the directors, um, you know, all the cast and the crew, like everyone was just so welcoming and so warm. And it was literally a big family because everyone was isolated. You wasn't just isolated. Everybody was isolated out there. You know, you was away from your home, you was away from your family, you was away from your friends. Um, you know, but we all had the same, you know, we all was all working toward the same end goal, really, just to make it as best show possible so yeah i absolutely loved it absolutely loved it yeah i never even thought about that actually because obviously a lot of the cast aren't scottish aren't local so were you all like rooming together in like a hotel or what was that actually i never even thought about that before how you would have been living yeah so we literally lived in a block of apartments um literally in a town called Greenock where it was actually filmed which is round about I'd say around about 25 miles out, outside of Glasgow um now if you can imagine if a a big show on BBC one moved to your particular town not even a city a town you are going to watch that show um so as you can imagine it was literally absolutely crazy down there living in that town I mean we used to I mean, go outside of our apartment. We used to go into the McDonald's. We used to go. In, we used to get absolutely bombarded. You could not go anywhere without people noticing who you are. Um, it was it, it was not as you can imagine, like a small town. Um, yeah. But we we lived in like a little apartment, and it was literally like episode of Friends. Like you'd literally just be chilling, and someone would go whoop and just pop the head in and and in and out of each other's apartments. Um, but we lived on the Clyde which is obviously the big river um, flowing through Greenock, moving into parts of Glasgow. Um, and it was incredible where we lived. Absolutely incredible. We had the best time. Um, and we was very social. We was all always doing stuff together. Um, you know, there was not one person in the cast um, that, we, you know, we didn't get on with. Yeah. Did you room with someone then? Did you share an apartment with someone? And if so, yeah, we, Joe Slater. Yeah, yeah, Joe Slater, yeah. So at, at first... Um, um, I actually shared with Joe Slater and um, Chris Chung. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I forgot his name. I forgot his name on the show, actually. But, um, yeah, what a guy he is as well. What a guy. He was, like, literally our father figure whilst, whilst we was there. Me and Joe were just absolutely, you know, he, Joe's 17, 16, I'm 18. We're both absolutely running wild in Scotland. And he kind of, you know, tamed us down and, and you know, shown us the way of the world. Because, literally, I, I was living with my mum and dad. And now, all of a sudden, you know, I'm living at home. Um, living on my own sorry so um, that was an experience in itself and then after that and the second series it was just me and Joe and you know I love Joe to bits he's like literally one of the best friends in the whole world 
but literally we was neck and neck at some points, you know. <laughs> like, you know, we was literally ready to fight each other, <laughs> especially because he's a scouter as well. <laughs> <laughs> so that must have been as well, kind of like, especially at that age, it's kind of like university then. I mean, you got to live together, you could pop in out of each other, you know you had to be there in the morning for class, I sent, well, for fucking production, but same sort of situation almost. Is that what it felt like for you? Yeah, that's so weird that you say that, actually, because I was literally thinking about that the other week. It was, I literally had the experience of university, but I got paid, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, I was learning, I was learning on the job because that was my first big role. So for me, that's the best experience you can have, you know, I was working on set every single day, I was hitting my marks, I was learning to... Um, you know, read all my scripts to analyze my scripts. I was learning how to, um, you know, alter my kind of theatric kind of style to, you know, small, you know, intimate TV. Um, and then also I had the, the other side of it where I had surrounded by all of my friends and, you know, we, we'd have a good time and, you know, we'd drink, not a lot, but quite a lot, but maybe too much, but sometimes maybe not, but a lot, but yeah. Um, but no, it was that's what I'm saying. It was it was literally like university. Yeah, hundred percent. I say, did you get to improv a lot? Because I'd say from watching your content you put online, like I'd say you'd be very very good at the improv side. Did you get to do much of that? Well, yeah, I, I did. To be fair, I mean, once the once the writers kind of seen me on set and kind of knew my style of acting, they used to be quite open. And they used, my character kind of evolved and changed throughout the series. They kind of put more funny stuff and, and more um, kind of like comedic kind of words and, and kind of different stuff that, that matched me. You know what I mean? So there was a lot of me in Darren. So in terms of like um, just kind of going free, then yeah, I was. I was given a lot more space than a lot of other people around me, which I was very fortunate for. But... I mean, with with in terms of film, film is very improvisational. You know, they've got a lot on the reel. It's bigger budgets, but TV, you know, you can't do too much improvisation because you've got to think about, um, you know, the cost of you know getting the scene done. You've got to do a certain amount of pages per day. Otherwise, it's going to be quite lengthy and it's going to you know it's going to cost quite a lot. But um, yeah, I did have, I did have quite a, a lot of input into into the character, hundred percent. And I mean, obviously, your character was quite a comedic character probably a lot of laugh value but I mean from someone that watched it at that age you obviously had, you had quite a, a hard character as well I mean you had the the part of the story where your mother in the show died and you had that really I'd say probably hard scene for you as well uh because it was probably one of the first times you'd done something like that as well especially on show uh well what was that like being able to transfer your character because you've done it so well as well and looking back at it recently it was such a good transition a good character arc for yourself yeah, it was it was hard to be fair. It was it definitely pushed me out of my comfort out of my comfort zone. I'd never done anything like that. Anything like I'd done like I obviously I grew up in musical theatre. I did loads of shows, you know, literally all all around the UK. But in terms of an intimate crying scene on on national TV, that was that was really hard. Um, and there's two ways you can look at it. Um, you can either be the character in that moment. Um, and really feel what he is going through, or you can use something called emotional recall. Emotional recall basically means you use a part within your own life that's made you sad or it's made you cry, and then you use that in the scene. And I had to use emotional recall. Um, I had to use something that was you know very dear to me, um, and that made me uh, upset. And then once that happened, I fell into the role and the scene a lot more easy and then I was Darren and I was in that situation but sometimes you need something to to trigger emotion you can't just bring on emotion it's 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 very very difficult yeah so what's it like on production I mean do they give you like a couple of minutes beforehand to sort of get yourself in that mindset are you expected to just jump into it or are they a bit more you know lenient and you know take five minutes get yourself prepared mentally and then just shoot yeah, hundred percent. One, if it is an emotional scene, then they're a lot more lenient. Um, they have to, they have to give you that time. They have to. Yeah. If um, you know, if you, you you can't just jump straight into in, into stuff like that. Um, and at the end of the day, the director wants the best for for his episode. I mean, don't know if if you know, but Watley Road was. It, we had a director for two episodes, and then the director would change. 
every two episodes. So we'd have loads and loads and loads and loads of different directors coming in. So in terms of that director, he wants the best for his episodes. He wants to make it more the, the most authentic uh, and the most you know, um, a better, better episode that he possibly can. So ultimately, he needs to give actors space, he needs to give actors time, he needs to be considerate. And the director um, was a great guy um, called Rob. He was amazing. He gave me as much time as I, as I wanted. And he really, yeah, he was, he, he was really good, to be fair, really good. Awesome. What, what's the reason for that, actually, in the industry? Why did directors change like that every couple of episodes instead of just pulling one on for like a full season? Is it because different people bring different aspects to different sort of themes within the, that episode, the writing? Well, yeah, um, to, to be fair, I think it is. I think I, I think it's always going to be Waterloo Road. It's always going to be a particular program. But, um, you know, directors have different ideas and it might spin it off in in a completely different direction and and you know they might go with that or, or they might not but in terms of um Watley Road it was kind of more logistical as well because we had two teams we had a blue team and had a red team so a blue right. team a blue team would be filming episode 1 and 2 and then the red team would be filming 3 and 4 and then the blue team would be filming 5 and 6 and then and so on so we had two directors working at one particular time um, which was always interesting because sometimes I would be in I would be in the middle of the woods filming for episode two, and all of a sudden I'd have to get picked up and go and film for episode four in school, like in the same day. Was it long days, Liam? What What was your sort of schedule like? Was it grinding for you? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, the, the, the <laughs> I mean, they say things things do you know, wear off, but it never, it, it never felt like a job. It never felt like a job. It, it never does when I'm on set, but it was very, very long hours. A lot of people don't realise how long it actually is. I mean, we was getting picked up most of the time at probably at about half five, quarter to six. You'd be in the makeup chair for probably about half six. Um, you'd be then go into the costume, possibly around about seven o'clock. And then around about half seven, that's when you're rehearsing, you're going through what you're going to be going through in the day. Um, and then you'd literally get back around about seven at night. You'd finish filming at seven at night. So by the time you got home, probably be about half seven, eight o'clock. So it's, 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 it's more than 12 hours a day, most of the time, on, on traveling and getting back. And then when you get home, you have to learn your lines for the next day. Yeah, so a lot of discipline as well, making sure you're, getting up at that time making sure you know you're ready to go you're learning your lines as well because that's obviously a, such a key part of and knowing what you're going in with the next day so it, it is almost more than a full-time job at that point yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. there's a lot that there's a lot that goes into it and especially being um you know an 18 year old lads with you know well people won't mind me saying i don't mind saying you know with you know with access to you know a lot of money um and you know a lot of you know distractions it is, it is it is a task do you know what i mean you've got to make sure that you are ready and you you stay disciplined and i knew that was my career so i never i never once messed up never once that's good though well look um do you keep in contact with anyone else obviously joe slater um anyone else you keep in contact from back in that day yeah well i keep in contact with uh, max um who he's doing very well at the moment he's doing um he's playing ben mitchell on um, eastenders yeah, that's who played Justin, if you no one realised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I keep in touch with Rebecca Craven as well. Rebecca Craven, she is one of <laughs> one of the most amazing humans I have ever met in my life. She's like an auntie aunt. So everyone would always go to her with problems, and and she's always open to to speak emotionally, um, and and also helping out with you know learning your lines. She was like she was she won't mind me saying this either. She was like literally like the mother of the group. She she was the glue who held everyone together, um, and yeah, she is absolutely incredible. Every time I'm in London, I always you know go and go and catch up and, and go and see her. Yeah, because you guys had quite a good sort of chemistry on screen as well. Um, because you had a couple of storylines, obviously were running parallel, but you seemed to have a real chemistry together there. Yeah, hundred percent. We was honestly we was we was the best bestest of friends ever on on set. We all we all was we we all we all were. We all supported each other, but. You know, we all would make sure that you know. First of all, we was we was all happy. 
that was that was the fundamental part because if you're not happy then you're not your work's not going to be the same um so if there was any emotional problems any personal problems then we'd always make sure that we, we was there for each other um so we did build up a a great relationship yeah yeah Awesome. Well, we'll wrap up the water road bit here um, with a question I got asked today. Um, I don't see it happening, but do you see any chance of a comeback or a reunion for the old Waterloo Road cast? I mean, I don't think so, mate. I look about 27 now, mate. Do you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> I thought that. You wouldn't see me in a skill uniform, but um, I, I don't know. I don't know. But realistically, I don't think so. Um, you can probably see the pattern between series in the UK. 10 series is probably maximum and that's enough um you know shameless just for instance 10 10 series 10 series is a lot um you need to you need to make sure the storylines are organic authentic and if you you go in for that amount of time you know it's hard to kind of think of new stuff really you can't really repeat what you've done um and you know for 10 years you know there's room for other projects um not just the you know the same old one really so i doubt it but you know you you, you never know